Hello, I am Luis Nuño. I am a professor in the area of signal theory and communications at the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. Now I'm going to explain in a few minutes how to begin to improvise. Improvisation exists since the beginning of the music theory. However, nowadays its use has been practically reduced to jazz. Improvisation generally consists in creating a melody suitable for a given chord progression. This means that we have a chord progression and we have to compose a melody that fits or sounds well with those chords. ImproChart is an improvisation chart that automatically gives us all the scales related to a given chord. This is the ImproChart. It consists of two rotating discs, one being cardboard and the other plastic. This is a picture of ImproChart. To explain improvisation, I chose one of my compositions called After the Rain, which is a jazz ballad. The structure of this composition is a standard jazz form. It means that it has four phrases, A, A, B, A, with eight bars each. Here you can see uh, phrase A, eight bars, again phrase A, eight bars, then phrase B, which is different and is called the bridge, and then again phrase A. Usually in jazz, first the head is played, the head is this music, then the solos, and to perform the solos, we have to mentally delete all the melody and just keep the quotes, as here. And then the head is played again. Usually the improvisation consists in two phases. The first one is very technical. For each chord of group of chords, we need to know which scale or scales are suitable for improvising on them. For this phase, we can use the chord scale theory which states that if the notes of a chord belong to a certain scale, this scale can be used for improvising on the chord. It's very simple. And the second phase is more creative and needs experience. After choosing one of these scales, we have to form a melody with its notes. That is, we have to develop the solo. If we want to improvise by using the impro chart, we take the first chord in the score, which is B flat major seventh. Then we take the impro chart and look for the symbol triangle, which is major seventh. And we rotate the discs until this symbol is on the right of B flat, thus forming the B flat major seventh chord. Then we obtain a region defined by blue lines which inside contains all the possible scales for improvising on this chord. These scales are G blues, D harmonic minor, D blues, B flat major, bebop major, major pentatonic, F major, major pentatonic, C major pentatonic. So we have many scales for improvising on this chord. For simplicity, in this example, we are going to choose only major pentatonic scales because they are very used in jazz. So for this chord we can choose B flat major pentatonic, F major pentatonic or C major pentatonic. For those musicians with, who prefer the Latin notation the, there is a different version of impro chart with notes Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In this example, we will use the English notation. So we take the second chord in the score, which is C minor 7, and we look for the symbol M7 in the plastic disc of Impro chart, and we rotate the discs until this symbol is on the right of C, thus forming the C minor 7 chord. Then we obtain a region defined by blue lines, which inside contains all the possible scales for improvising on this chord. If we choose only major pentatonic scales, we can we have E flat, B flat, and F major pentatonic scales. Then we can make a table like this, where we have the chords of the tune, and then for each chord we have 
the possible scale for improvising on each chord. Here we can see that the B flat major pentatonic scale is suitable for improvising on many of the bars. We could expect this because the key signature has two flats, so we can expect that B flat major or B flat major pentatonic is a suitable scale for improvising. Here we have a diminished chord for which we don't have a major pentatonic available scale. So in this case we can choose any different scale or we can play just the notes of the chord, the arpeggio, or only one note of the chord, or simply we don't play anything. We don't need to play all the time when improvising. Let's see the other four bars in the A phrase. Here we have the chords and the available scale for improvising. We can see that the B flat major pentatonic scale is suitable for improvise on phrase A. In phrase B we can see that it has four flats in the key signature so, so we could expect that A flat major or A flat major pentatonic scale will be suitable for improvising on this phrase but it is not true. In this case the best scale for improvising is E flat major pentatonic as we can see in this table. These are the other four bars of phrase B. We can see that E flat major pentatonic scale is suitable for improvising on this phrase. For those musicians with prefer not to use a staff, they can simply write the chords, like here, and the scale for improvising, here B flat major pentatonic for phrase A, and in some cases the arpeggios of the chords, again phrase A, and in phrase B we need to change the scale, in this case to E flat major pentatonic. So some arpeggios for sorting chords and then again phrase A which where we can improvise with the B flat major pentatonic scale. Now we move on to the phase two of the improvisation which is creating a melody with the notes of previous scales and arpeggios. Although this phase is highly creative and needs much experience the following directions can help. For example, memorize every scale and arpeggio you are going to use, divide the solo into phrases of two or four bars, compare the different effect obtained when starting a phrase before, after or just on the first beat of the bar. The effect is very different. Divide each of those phrases into two parts with the form question answer or tension release or antecedent consequence. The question and answer must be consistent between them. Use the repetition and sequence to give a structure to your solo as well as to facilitate the interaction with the other musicians and the audience. Listen to the masters and try to imitate them. As well, listen to other soloists and analyze their solos. And of course, try to be creative and use your imagination. We must think that there are always new possibilities. Here we have an example of solo for the first uh, phrases A we use the B flat major pentatonic and some arpeggios then phrase B and again phrase A. Conclusions improvisation consists in creating a melody suitable for a given chord progression. It consists usually in two phases. Phase one is knowing the most suitable scale for improvising on each chord of group of chords. We can obtain these scales with impro chart, with, which is this improvisation chart. It is based on the chord scale theory. And then the phase two to create a melody with these notes. You can find full information on the webpage harmonicwheel.com there you will find a user guide for impro chart as well as some examples explained in full detail. Thank you very much for your attention.